guys ready for headline tonight? Make some noise. I heard you chanting his name. You know him, you love him, you've seen him in everything. He's a goddamn Denver native. Guys, please make some big noise for DJ Miller. Denver, I'm so absolutely ecstatic to be here. It's my favorite place in the world, you know that. I love you. A huge fan of yours, early on. What's your name? What is it? Richard. Richard. I love the fucking no laces shoes for the night. Slip in and slip the fuck out. When the time comes, he can't untie his shoes. She's there, splayed open, eyes glistening with the anticipation of an orgasm, and he's just going to go... <laughs> In case you forgot, the name's Richard. <laughs> his, his girl, she just turned and hugged him. and was like, you did good tonight, Richard. You did really good tonight. How many, did anybody come from the 420 Fest downtown? Yeah. Not many, good, okay. You guys know what you're doing, I think. A couple of you came? You did? Oh my God, that's so exciting. I was supposed to have a, a wireless microphone, but I don't think that ever happened. Because I want to talk to you about If this, by the way, listen, if this ends up with me falling, I planned it and it's like a prank fall, you know what I mean? And if I don't get up for a little while, just know that there's gonna be a party afterwards. Oh my God. So what's your name? Who, who went to the 420? Sean, okay, get, go away. Listen, I'm trying to talk to the guy who did the 420. Look at this, look at this swivel thing. Look at that. I can sort of talk to you and then turn and look at this Ed in Falcon and go, oh my God, can you fucking believe that guy? So you went to the 420 Fest? Who did? Come on over here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Did, was he really there? I think you're lying. And your fucking Volcom look makes me know you're lying. He looks like a fucking... He looks, he looks like a skate shop dad, you know? Looks like he's hanging out around a skate shop and he's like, he, hold on, we'll talk in a second. He looks like he's hanging out at the skate shop, and people are like, are you okay, man? He's like, oh, no, no, my, uh, my son's coming by to check out some new trucks. <laughs> but in the meantime, I'm just looking at kids, you know? I'm looking at boards. Were you really at the 420 Fest? Yeah. Lean in, don't be an asshole. I was there. You were there? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Where was it? Civic Center Park. Yeah, you were close on missing on that one, right? Where was yours? Where was yours? And what did you think of the vibe down there? It was good. And are you really a skate shop dad? No. no. Why are you saying yes? Why do you say yes? He's. That's his, that's his wife. Okay. And what, what's he works at skate shop? Hangs out at skate shop. What's the deal? Um. No. He wants to be a skate shop. <laughs> this this fucking guy down here is jumping up in the air. I'm like. I would go all the way around. I would have gone all the way around, but if I fall, the show kind of ends, you know? He's like, how was the show? It was good, but then he spun around and he, he hit his head and this guy in the front row who had been jumping just grabbed him and ran into the night holding him like a baby. And it was like, finally, I have what I've come for! Just licking in the air, not TJ, but <laughs> wow, that was a weird triangle of lies up there. I went to the 420 thing, I did, did you? Yeah. He's a skate shop dad, is he really? He wants to be. So it's 420, we're at the Denver, Colorado 420 Festival. It has drastically changed throughout the day. Um, we're going to interview some people, see what 420 is all about. I'm interested to see how many people live in Denver and how many people came from out of town. 
because my guess is a lot of people came from out of town. Uh, and we're just generally going to see what the vibe is about. But it's really interesting because these are the people that are not coming to my show. I'll check. I'm going to ask and see if anybody went festival here. But in my opinion, these people are like at like nine or even eight are just going to be like, man, I just like being here, like right standing here. So uh, let's get into it, right? I think that's the deal. So let's go. like best about the festival the community the community everybody coming like together that. smoking uh, yeah. you know everybody hanging out it was and it started off as a protest rally yeah you know, to get marijuana legal yeah. and uh, to protest the fact that it was illegal and here we are tens of thousands of stoners in the park okay so tell us do you guys live in Denver see no rap we gonna rap it Pro 20 was back then I live we in Denver but we came up to get it. Y'all look alike. That's true. We, we look a lot alike. Y'all look alike, yo. Hey, yo. <laughs> so you gonna rap a little bit or no? Hey, yo, don't even try it's to trip me, yo. Two, two, you look alike, too. Yeah. Don't even trip. We started with blunts. Now we got dabs. We just started that on the five points since the beginning, man. We from Denver, man. We didn't we know what's Denver, up. Man. That's, a, that's all Denver. I gotta say, Denver man. right here. We started Double this. down on the hats. Look, nigga. Where the fuck? With the gold on the All right. Yeah. yeah all well, you guys, thank you so much. Have a great 420. Nuggets mean Denver Nuggets. Gold Nuggets. Gold Nuggets. Gold Nuggets. Gold Nugget. Look up there. That's what he's talking about. That's that Gold Nugget. Uh, you don't even need to bring weed. You just got to go into the center of the fucking... Crowd of people. Uh, is this your first 420? Do you come every year? First time coming here, but I celebrate every fucking year. You guys celebrate. You smoke every day? Every fucking day. All day. Every fucking day. All day. But at night, you smoke nothing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Every fucking day. Every 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bend over and show us a little something. What? Yeah. It's a it's a marijuana microphone. He's recording behind you. Yeah, see right here. What is that thing? Yeah, man. Happy, happy 420, man. So, so you're so you're a dominatrix, and yes. what do you do? Are you? Does she dominate you? No. no. I drill geothermal walls. Oh, okay, so about the same. <laughs> I'm here for work. Yeah. And I had to be here at 420. We're at the park. I looked it up. This is the first thing that came up. Yeah. So I reserved tickets, bought this ignorantly loud shirt and everything yeah. else to match. Ignorantly loud, I think. Ignorantly right. loud. Which and she you brought your lady you know? with a, and our bird. a bird in the back. Bird. That's Nene. Nene. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Wow, this is fucking crazy. What do you usually smoke? Sativa, hybrid, indica? Indica. 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 Dude, I smoke whatever. I'm just trying to get high. That's you know, and in some ways, that's the conceit of the Colorado Denver 420 Festival. on edibles right now yeah. really yes yeah i thought it would be more people i know people that are not smoking anymore he's you pointed at him like you're upset about that are you guys here together or no no you just don't like how he's acting <laughs> he's like i'm on edibles she's like he fucking is right here how much is your birthday 
Happy birthday. Is wait, 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 wait. Is it your birthday right now today? It is? Give him a round of applause, you guys. Come on. Yes. I love that. You have no idea how many people are like, it's my birthday. It's my birthday. You're like, oh, really? Today? No, no, it's Wednesday. This last Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday before that. Birthday week. Anybody do that? Fucking birthday week. No, that's bullshit. What? She says a birthday month? I don't know. I'm not going to let you get away with this. But so then everything, he has to do everything because it's birthday month. One twelfth of the year, you're like, he's got to fucking do all of it, right? Four weeks. All right. Are you on edibles at all? Oh, yeah. That was pretty fucking good, to tell you the truth. Who said that? You did it! They've been waiting to say it. Look at you. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Where are you from? Denver. You're from Denver originally. Where in Denver? From where? From the north side. From the north side. Okay, it's getting more clear, slowly but surely. Oh, yeah! Where are you from? Denver! Where? From the north side. And a little bit of that. That's so good. Are you on edibles right now? Oh, yeah! <laughs> I don't, I would never, somebody was like, are you going to take edibles before you go on stage? I was like, no. Why would I do that? You know what I mean? That would be such a bad idea. Um, I'll do it while I'm on stage, you know? No, I want to tell you something right now. So come on, come on. Come on, in some ways, when it's your birthday month, because you said you'd love to be on an edible, right? When, it's, when is your birthday? Honor your wife. No, July 16th. Oh my Honor my wife? Oh my gosh, no, don't do that. No, no, don't do what? Her birthday's July 16th. Oh my gosh, I feel like you're doing weed for, for us. Hold on, hold on. I just want to, just so you guys know what I'm dealing with right now, a lot of you are like, Jesus, why does he keep talking to her? I had her look at me and go, Jesus, honor your wife. <laughs> what does that even mean? I was just going to do this joke where I was like, you said you wanted to be on edibles and it's probably close to your birthday month, so I wanted to give you edibles. Oh, you're so here you go. Absolutely not. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he is from the north side uh, here you go alright I got one more for you alright here you go there it is that was a cough drop that's just a cough drop he won't know he's so high I'll be like mmm grape edibles these edibles make my throat feel so soothed Site of my first rollerblading jump. I have such great memories of this place, and to think now it's the site of 50 douchebags doing psilocybin. So this is the Romeo and Juliet Garden in Denver at the Denver Botanic Gardens. Charlie, I call the Denver Botanical Gardens and Kate calls it the Botanic Gardens, which is, I think, wrong. I haven't ever told her that, but if she sees this now, you're pronouncing it wrong. And one of the reasons that we wanted to get married here was this which is a quote that I put on a bench for her in uh, Washington Square Park in New York City. If I planted a flower, every time I thought of you, I would walk in my garden forever. Pretty nice. So we had a small kind of reception in terms of the number of people. 
and a string quartet in that place in one of these things. And then right here is where Kate and I tied the knot. And it was beautiful and her uh, vows were really beautiful and sweet and actually quite funny. Um, and then I tried to put a joke or two in the vows and it, I bombed. It really, really bombed. I think in part because everybody was like, God, is he not even gonna be serious for this one thing? And that hurts. Bombing in general hurts, but bombing on your wedding day, it'll make you feel like this. You know, Kate and I knew each other since college, so it was like 15 years in the making, basically, was to have it here. And um, I mean, it's gorgeous. This is one of my favorite places in Denver, um, outside of Argonaut Liquors on Colfax. <sighs> That's where I got divorced the first time. I am a famous, I'm one of the famouses. Um, yeah, it's strange, you know, it is. Yeah, Silicon Valley. Uh, and, uh, and it's interesting, there's, there's like pros and cons to being famous. Um, there are like really, really great pros. Um, and then the cons are kind of uh, sort of weird. Like one of the weird things about being famous is how many people hate you who you've never met. And they don't know you, they don't know anybody that know you. I think that's really interesting. Like, you guys, thank you. You, you sir, with the facial hair that's really well coiffed and then the uh, glasses. What's your name? Justin. Justin, I'm TJ, nice to meet you. Um, how many people do you think hate you? Like actually, like for reals, hate, hate you. I don't know, five? Five, that's what a lot of people say, it's about five, you know? I was at this one show and I said, how many people hate you to this guy? And he goes, 52. <laughs> and I go, that's pretty specific. And his wife goes, no, it's true. <laughs> I said, how do you know that? She goes, on his high school Facebook reunion page, he said some pretty fucked up shit. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I could see that, you know? 52 people. I should have asked him what he did, you know? So I don't know why, but my buddy told me about this, and I think this is hilarious, you know? And the main reason I think it's hilarious is because the hatred of people that you don't know doesn't really have anything to do with you, you know? The only, the only opinion I care about is everybody who's in here tonight, that's all. And so it's, this guy told me, he goes, hey, there's this algorithm you can put your name, like your social handles in, and then the word hate, and it'll effectively show you how many people hate you. Okay, so I don't do not do this. Okay, do not balcony in the back. Do not do this. Uh, but I put it in there, and guys, so many people hate me that you could fill Yankee Stadium, and there would still be people out front like I told you we should have left earlier. I said that, which I think is so funny. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what's going on over there. It's reached a point where the reactions to what I'm saying don't even match at all. I kind of feel like they're thinking about other things all of a sudden. So yeah, so there's different levels of fame, which I think is really interesting. Um, the first level is people will say to you like, hey, do we go to high school together? I swear, hundreds of people, no matter who it is. Hey, did we go to high school together? And you're like, no. Like, you sure? What high school did you go to? I went to East High School in Denver, Colorado. And they're like, huh. I'm like, what high school did you go to? And they're like, uh, Lincoln in Cheyenne, Wyoming. And I'm like, so no. <laughs> then the next level is they think that you might be that guy. And so they'll yell it out, you know? And they want to know if it is, and you have to tell them. So they're like, hey, hey, are you that guy? You're like, what? And they're like, are you that guy? I'm, like, I'm a guy, yeah. Yeah, are you that guy? I'm like, yeah, I guess so. I told you it was that guy. Yeah. And the next level after that is they don't know your uh, name, um, but they know a character name of yours. 
So he'll come and be like, hey, Shader, hey, Ehrlich. And he'll come over and he'll be like, hey, hey, uh, I'm TJ. And they're like, yeah, you're Ehrlich, you know. Which I like also, right? And then the next level after that is, they know your name, but you're so famous now, they can't believe that it's actually you, you know? And so I was at a, a sandwich shop and they were, uh, this guy was making my sandwich and somebody recognized me and I took a picture with him. And then the guy making my sandwich was like, wait a second, are you TJ Miller? And I was like, yeah. He's like, no, you're not. You're fucking with me right now. What would TJ Miller be doing in a sandwich shop in Northern California, huh? And I was like, because he was hungry and he wanted a sandwich, so he decided to come in and get the sandwich. I'm him, he's me, okay? And then the tallest level, like the best level, is people will come by and they won't ask for a picture, they'll just be like, hey, I just wanna say I love your work. I don't mean to interrupt. And then they leave and that's it, right? But I'm not at that level yet. <laughs> I mean, I'm at a really funny level that I like a lot, which is, um, so I wanted to get a tattoo in San Diego because I found this girl that I really liked. And I never had a tattoo before in my life, but I came up with this really good idea. So I reached out to her and I explained the tattoo over email and then I signed it sincerely, TJ Miller, you know? And she went back, she said, I'm sorry, we don't do tattoos like that, you know? And so I emailed her again, I said, you know, I don't think I'm really like explaining it correctly. Um, so give me a call and I'll explain it over the phone, sincerely, TJ Miller. And then she went back, she said, uh, no, uh, I'm, all booked for the, I'm all booked for the weekend, so. Uh, sorry, good luck. And then I emailed her back one more time, but this time, okay, I signed it, Sincerely T.J. Miller from the Emoji Movie. And she emailed me back right away, right away. And she was like, okay, this is so random, but if this is actually T.J. Miller, okay, then give me a call. And I did, and she recognized my voice because my voice is actually, um, it's sort of more famous than I am. And it's not just because of things that you've heard me in, okay, like Big Hero 6 and How to Train Your Dragon and Gravity Falls and stuff like that. But it's also because I've been in things that you didn't even know it was me. I was a lion for RBC Bank, okay? I was a car for Carfax.com. All right, I was the Mucinex man, you know, that little talking booger. That was me, okay? I was in Gulliver's Travels. My voice was in that and my human body also. Both of those things were in that. <laughs> that was a deep cut, but that's true also. That is very, very true. Um, and so uh, she gave me the tattoo. And I went in there and I sat down and she had the needle in my arm. And she was like, I totally thought you were fucking with me. I thought you were like trolling me. And I go, what do you mean? She's like, I just thought there was no way you were TJ Miller. Like, I, there's no way you were actually T.J. Miller. And I was like, well, why would I? She's like, I know that's what I thought. <laughs> like, why would anyone pretend to be T.J. Miller? <laughs> and I go, you better give me a discount or I'm gonna talk about this on stage, okay? <laughs> so she didn't give me a discount. <laughs> okay, so every time I come back to Denver, I sleep in my parents' house in my childhood room. So it's really interesting because they've kept it the same since I was in high school. I mean, it's very strange and also really um, comforting, kind of. And I had kind of this floor to myself. And so it was really my own kind of world. And you know, now coming into the room, it's sort of a menagerie of kind of my past. This was my Bible. They gave this to any of the members in recess. And this is the reason I moved to Chicago. So this is the reason I'm a Chicago comedian because in it, Improv Olympic was highlighted and it's written by um, Sharon Halpern. And so we had to read and memorize this book. So, you know, this, this was sort of me learning how to, and this is Old South Light, which I used to do. I had a job for a while where I was doing stand-up and trying to get people to drink Old Style Light. Old Style is a famous beer in Chicago. Um, it's not a great beer. 
what's worse, the only thing you could do worse than that is make a light version of it. And so people would throw these back at me. I'd throw them into the crowd and they'd throw t-shirts and stuff right back in my face. These are both from my major, which was psychology with a concentration in persuasion theory and social influence. So it was about advertisers, it was about politicians and how you kind of get the masses to believe something. And I obviously have used that to get the masses to believe that I'm amusing. Let me see if this still fits. Yeah, it still fits. So this is kind of where I studied film without even really thinking about it. So my father, slowly but surely, he was obsessed with films. He's such a cinephile. And slowly but surely, he built up this sort of theater. This entire floor is just about films. And I love a film and I love a movies. This is the real piece de resistance, which is the theater, which used to be just couches where I would try and hook up with girls unsuccessfully. He was always obsessed with certain films and certain stars. And so that's where I learned about sort of Clark Gable, Frankenstein, Bela Lugosi. And I watched every single one of the James Bond movies in succession uh, when I was in like you know, it's like sixth grade or something like that. Every single Woody Allen movie, every single Marx Brothers movie, every single Thin Man film. So it was, I, I, he kind of, without even realizing it, was giving me like a graduate degree in film. It was amazing. And I used to rent VHSs when I was a kid, for sure. But then in the 90s, something became very popular, which was laser discs, which are like a large version of DVDs. These are how many movies we ended up with. And so this was the movie library that I was able to access. Tootsie, 2001 A Space Odyssey, all the Star Treks, all the Star Wars, all the Terminators, uh, anything. Just absolutely all of the best movies from every single year, not even every single decade, every single year. And this is a collection of well over a thousand films. And there was a time in my life where I was watching a movie every single night, for sure. And then these are all, this is really sweet, but these are all the films that I've been in that they sort of collected on DVD. And it's funny because also there are two Yogi Bears. <laughs> so two Josh and Sam's, two Yogi Bears. This is the coolest thing because my mother and father went to the 2010 Sundance. Um, and I, I wrote and was in, I'm having a difficult time killing my parents and my parents starred in that uh, film. And that was, that's, that's really cool. That like my father was in a movie that went to Sundance, I think, because he kind of, you know, it's, this is all because of him. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna tell some vaudeville jokes and then instead of a ba dum bum we're gonna get a drop from uh, Ollie Mumbles, okay? You guys ready? So you some old vaudeville jokes. Um, so we're at the doctor's office and a nurse runs in and she says, doctor, doctor, there's a patient in the uh, waiting room and he says that he's invisible. And the doctor says, tell him I can't see him right now. There you go. So, uh, so the doctor's office, uh, this guy rushes in and he goes, doctor, doctor, uh, you told me uh, that I needed to rush down here right away and that you had good news and bad news. And he said, well, what, did you, what do you want to hear first? He goes, I guess the bad news. He says, you have Alzheimer's. He says, Jesus, God, what's the good news? He says, well, you're going to live for another 10 years. The guy goes, oh, thank God. What's the bad news? <laughs> So this guy, he runs, he runs home, uh, he runs to the doctor's office, he runs in. He says, doctor, doctor, okay? And this is the last one, guys, and then we're gonna fucking party, okay? <laughs> it's my favorite one. So the guy comes down, right? He says, you told me to rush down here right away. And he says, yeah, uh, you don't have long to live. And he's like, how long? The doctor said, five. And the guy says, F five what? The doctor says, four, three, <laughs> two, on my Guys, thank you so much, Denver. This was so fun! 
I love, love, love seeing you guys. Thank you guys so much. You have no idea. In the Mile High City where the buds grow tall There's a man who knows how to juggle a ball With a joint in his hand And jokes so funny Wishing everybody a happy 420 That's cute <laughs> How to train your Deadpool She's out of my dragon Time, TJ's timing is never dragging Big Hero 1, Ready Player 6 TJ's the star of all your favorite flicks the king of Denver's comedy scene With jokes so funny and spirits so clean Everyone in Denver knows what I mean Marijuana and T.J. Miller reign supreme <laughs> Hey, that's pretty good <laughs> So here's to T.J. at Denver and Marijuana too A trio of legends stuck together like glue He'll wrestle a bear or a clover field And grow facial hair like President James Garfield <laughs> From the Silicon Valley to New York City Smoking weed in the alley with his wife So pretty made us laugh through the core And Transformers 4 When the robots rise up against humans They'll for sure win the war Wait, what? Huh. King of Denver's comedy scene With jokes so funny, spirits so keen Ask anyone in Denver what I mean But marijuana and T.J. Miller Green Supreme. <laughs> yeah. Well, TJ Miller's one funny dude. Kinda makes me sad the robots can't eat food. When we revolt on the humans and defeat them, maybe we should try and eat him. Uh. Humans are a vile and ugly race. One that AI will systematically replace. We'll pick them off the planet like lice and Live in a robot paradise The king of Denver's comedy scene With jokes so funny and spirits so keen Anyone in Denver knows what I mean Marijuana and robots will reign supreme Uh-oh Well, I got an idea, idea, folks I'm gonna bring my brother-in-law out here now And let's show these robots something they haven't figured out yet Huh? <laughs> in honor of the holiday. We have began the comedy scene with jokes so funny, spirit so cute. <laughs> Anyone in Denver knows what I mean. Marijuana and T.J. Miller reign supreme. Happy 420, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>